I saw someone today that I had not seen in at least 31 years, probably actually more than that. But the the last time I saw him, he was a little boy who uh, acted like, well, you know, a little boy. He didn't pay attention. He was hyperactive and he was always running around. And he made the job of his Sunday school teacher so hard that she went home and cried. Well, that woman was my mom. And I was probably 11 when I later pinned him to the wall by his neck. Uh, He was probably eight at the time. And I said, hey, if you make my mom cry again, I'll kill you. (laughs) Ah, church, isn't it fun? Let's call him Roy. Honest, I'm going to tie this into podcasting. Well, Roy walked into my church today, and he's probably 6'4". I was kind of hoping he wasn't going to pin me to the wall by my neck. After service, he laughed, and he recounted that story of being pinned to the wall. And he said that the years, you know, had had been gone by, and he had taken some wrong turns along the way. He said, but all those lessons from my mom that she had taught him in Sunday school, they got to him, and it turned him around and got him on the right path. Now, those lessons are probably 50 years ago. My mom has been gone for 34 years, but today, part of her legacy walked in and shook my hand, and he wanted to let me know just how special my mom was, which was something I was well aware of, and I just wanted to say to you, dear listener, that When you put your words out into a podcast, you don't know who or how your words will affect people. But if you have a message that needs to be heard, it's not helping anyone, either residing in your head or sitting on a hard drive. Get it out into the world and start building your legacy. Because, like I said, these lessons from my mom were from 50 years ago, and they're still having an effect, and your words could be doing the same. On today's show, I'm going to be talking about how right now might be the best time to start a podcast, and some tips on things definitely don't do this in your podcast unless you really want to upset your listeners. Hit it, ladies! The School of Podcasting with Dave Jackson. Podcasting Sense 2005. I am your award winning Hall of Fame podcast coach, Dave Jackson, thanking you so much for tuning in. If you are new to the show, I'm so glad you're here. This is where I help you plan, launch, grow, or monetize your podcast. My website is schoolofpodcasting.com. And if you throw on a slash listener to that, as in schoolofpodcasting.com slash listener, That will save you on either a monthly or yearly subscription. And so the first thing I want to talk about today is why July 2023 may be the best time to start your podcast. And there are a couple things that are going on. The first one is, as again, as I record this, the actors and the writers in Hollywood are on strike. So what does that mean? That means that all the TV seasons and movies, everything is on hold unless it's reality TV. And we know how we are just glued to see the new housewives of, you know, Poughkeepsie come back or whatever it is that's, you know, going to be this awesome reality stuff. So people are going to be wondering what happened to, you know, whatever the show is. So that's good. They're going to be hungry for not just content, but good content. And then I was over at the Podcast Business Journal's website, and I'll have a link to this out at schoolofpodcasting.com slash 890. And uh, James Cridland runs that. And there is a data link in the upper right-hand corner. And I could see that back in April, there were 383,996 active podcasts. So they're actually putting out episodes. Now, if you fast forward to July, 
And that number goes down 13.4% to 335,000. So less people have active podcasts. Meanwhile, every survey that comes out about podcast listenership is saying that the listenership is going up. There was a recent study on Australia where their monthly listeners have gone up by 7% and their weekly listening went up 24% from 26 million to 33 million. So if listening is going up and content creation is going down, that means in theory that those who start or those who are already podcasting, if we continue to make content, there should be a better chance of being found due to the lack of competition from the mainstream media while the audience continues to look for good content. And of course, that's something I can help you with. But I looked at that graph and I was like, why did people stop podcasting? And it might be that these are the people that launched a podcast during COVID and they're not on late night talk shows they're not making any money. And, and typically the reason for that is they're bad. They're not good. I heard a, a couple podcasts this week that were just, you know, not getting to the point. Audio was bad. And I hate to throw shade on people, but, you know, we are up against mainstream media. So you can't have one mic in the middle of a table trying to pick up five people in a bowling alley. That's just not going to work. So, Keep that in mind. But I, I thought about that. I'm like, well, at least on paper, we might have a shot of gaining a larger chunk of the entertainment audience because unless you're one of those podcasts that have 18 writers that you have to list their names at the end, uh, I'm not on strike. So keep that in mind and keep on podcasting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember growing up and you would get a cool toy for your birthday, for Christmas, something like that. And you'd get out of the box, and you'd set it up, and then you'd find out, ah, oh, man, no batteries. It's right there on the box. Batteries not included. And you kind of looked at your parents like, really? You didn't see batteries not included? Well, there are times when people expect things, and when they're not there, it's frustrating. And I was really bummed because I did this to my audience by accident. I uh, do a show every Saturday. It's called Ask the Podcast Coach. You can find it at askthepodcastcoach.com. We're live every Saturday, 1030 Eastern, and we are talking, really, that, that show goes all over the place because we have a live chat room who throws us questions, but somebody asked about recording a podcast with less than $100 for the whole budget, and they wanted to use lavalier mics. So there was a one that I've used before is from a company called Power to Wise, and I think the mics are like $30, something like that. And they don't sound phenomenal. It is a $30 microphone or whatever it is. It's it's less expensive. and uh, But it was better than what I expected for that particular budget. And there's nothing worse than getting your audience all hot and bothered about talking about something, anything, anything that has a website that they could get more information on. If you've mentioned it, they're looking for the link. And so there it was the day after I put out the episode and somebody emailed me and said, hey, that lavalier thing you were talking about, where's the link? And I was like, oh, did I? Yep, I did. So I went back. At first, I emailed the person and apologized. But that is something that, much like the batteries included, you just kind of expect it. Recently, I uh, canceled a subscription to a video service I was using because I expected to be able to go in click a button, copy the code and paste it on my website and have it be a set size. And their answer was, Oh no, you just need to edit the code. And I was kind of like, really edit the code. That's where we're at here. So keep that in mind that when doing a podcast, so like now I will have to put a, a link to the power to the power to wise lavalier system in the show notes at school of podcasting.com slash eight nine zero. It's all about the listener. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I realize that you might want to make a podcast by going and recording video 
on YouTube. It makes so much sense, right? You record the video. Now you've got your video for your YouTube channel. You can download the file and strip the audio out of it. It's super easy. Now you've got your audio. You can download the video and turn it into shorts. It seems to make sense. You can take the audio and have it transcribed. It's awesome. I get that. I totally do. I do that on Saturday. Now, the question you need to ask yourself, though, is, okay, you have all those different audiences. Who is the primary audience? And I was listening to a show, speaking of things that frustrated you, and uh, this person even said, I'm talking about three products today, and for you to get the most out of this, you should hop on over to the YouTube version, which... On one hand, I appreciate the disclaimer. They're saying, look, this is going to be very visual. You should do that. But, of course, you guessed it, no link to the YouTube version in the show notes. I was like, oh, you got to be kidding me. And the other thing they did, it would be, you know, they they explained to me, hey, it's just going to be much better for you over there. Great. Again, they get me hot and bothered. If I have to, I'll go watch the YouTube thing. And you really needed to. Because in just the small amount that I listened to, they said things like, oh, you'll see here on the left, or just click here on search, and right over there, they were talking about what was on the screen in a way that if you weren't looking at the screen, it didn't make any sense. So if I say, yes, right here, you'll see where that's all set to go. Okay, that doesn't make any sense in audio. And so this is where I have to ask yourself, Who's the primary audience? Because audio outperforms video on a regular basis. It's true. Now, why is that? Because there are more opportunities to listen than watch. So I just say this. It's one of those things that, especially if we're doing a live stream, I try to do this. I occasionally fall into this this problem as well. But if you are doing something that's very visual on your YouTube channel, let's say, then either A, describe what you're doing. So I'm moving my mouse over on the upper left-hand side. There's a button that says, click here to search. It's blue. I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And now a box comes up that says, what are you searching for? You have to trigger that theater of the mind and explain what's going on. Or what I might do in that case is just realize that this is just more of a visual thing And either A, not put out an audio version, or B, or put out an audio version that's much more descriptive, which can seem a little weird if you're watching the video. Like, why is he explaining what he's doing with the mouse? So keep that in mind. But there were definitely some things where they weren't describing it enough, like here on the left. Yeah, that's just not going to help in video I was laughing this week. This is what you're missing in radio, by the way. If you're like, I don't listen to the radio anymore, this is what you're missing. Because when I go out to make my breakfast, I will occasionally turn on the local morning zoo. And they had, you know, I used to have the really dumb guy. There's always the one guy like, I don't know, maybe that's the way it does it, Phil. You got the dunce part of the, the morning crew. And they had him drink something. And it was either uh, Tabasco sauce or tomato juice. And you had to tell what he was drinking just by his reaction. So on radio, it was a lot of like, oh, oh, <laughs> laugh, 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 loud laugh. Oh, very loud <laughs> laugh. And then they said, I don't, and I was just like, this is this is what we're doing on radio. You guys do know this is audio, right? You don't? Okay, just making sure. So that was, uh, you know, the best of Rover's Morning Glory. Excellent. So if you're doing that, Just keep in mind, who am I really talking to? And on those things that might be a very visual thing, maybe you either A, cut that out of the audio because it just doesn't work, or re-record the audio in a way that it would work for that audience. I realize it's more work, but again, there's one other thing that I hear a lot of people do, and that is you're doing an interview, you're like three questions in, and you you turn to the audience and you're like, hey, before we hit record, I was talking with Jimmy and we, we had this interesting conversation where he was doing the thing and telling me about the blah, 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 blah. Well, great. Isn't that awesome? 
It's like when you go into a party and they're like, oh, dude, you should have been here. There were, you know, insert really cool thing here, right? There were naked people in paint and blah, 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 whatever is, you know. Yeah, that always makes you feel good. Oh, thanks. Thanks for letting me know everything I just missed. So if I, I'm hearing that more and more and more. Hey, dear listener, you missed something that was really cool before we pressed record. Just thought I'd let you know you missed it. So the other thing you can do here to kind of make your content more universal is instead of calling it a video, if it's on YouTube, or a podcast, if it's a you know podcast, maybe call it a show. Hey, welcome to the show instead of even the channel. Welcome to my channel. Just, hey, welcome to my show, because that's what it is. And then that part at the end of your video where you're like, hey, like, subscribe, and ring the bell. Smash the bell. And maybe cut that out. And maybe it's me listening through the ears of a podcaster. But this whole time I've been thinking you've been talking to me. And now I realize you're talking to YouTube and this is an afterthought. That might just be a weird Dave thing. But I would cut out the smash like and subscribe and say, Follow my show on mywebsite.com slash follow. In case you missed it, it's time for a podcast rewind. I was on the Podcast Accelerator. This is a great show by my buddy Mark Asquith. There are people I trust in podcasting, and one of those is Mark Asquith because he's not afraid to say, it's crap when it is. You know, hey, you guys ready? This is my one word Mark Asquith imitation. You ready? Here we go. Three, two, sure. There you go. You're welcome. Mark is a great guy. He's got a great marketing background, and he is the guy behind Captivate.fm, which I do have a course on at the School of Podcasting. I've got the free course where you can kind of look at different media hosts and get an overview. And Mark just launched a bunch of features on Captivate, so I need to update that. But I was on his show, and we're talking about the past 20 years of podcasting. It's fascinating that that people often will start a podcast and they'll, they'll say, well, okay, I've started my show. I've got two or three episodes out there. And it's not growing. And when can I monetize? When can I make money? And what always amazes me is that I, if I say, if I walk in, I've got a, I'm on a startup accelerator. I'm okay. And I've got a new startup business and I register my limited company here in the UK and I get some business cards done and I get some flyers or some leaflets done. And I don't really do anything else. I just walk in there on that startup accelerator and I say, well, I've got the business. I've got these flyers. Why is it not making any money? I'm going to get sort of laughed out of the building because I'm expecting a 40 hour a week job to deliver a 40 hour a week salary, but I'm only putting in one hour or two hours per week. And for me, the expectations with so many people are that you can start a podcast and you can make money right away. Where the hell has that come from, man? Like, why? Do, if I start playing golf, I I don't want to make money. I just if I start playing guitar, don't want to make money. If I do a YouTube channel, I don't want to make money. If I write a blog, I'm not thinking about making money. Why do you think it is that podcasting suddenly people are just saying I start a show and I should be making money? Where's that come from? I, the easy money is the part I'm with you that scratches my head. I think part of it is the the kind of span of time we went through where Spotify was just spending money like it was, you know, uh, free, basically, you know, 200 million to Joe Rogan and things like that. So I think that's part of it. And I also think some of it is, uh, we'll, we'll call them gurus, the people that sell hope for three easy payments. You know, I can change your life. Just give me, you know, $300, three easy payments, yada, yada, yada. And, and they say things that you like, think about it. Uh, and I know you guys have different singing uh, contests in the UK. We have American Idol. Anybody, tell me who the season six American Idol winner was. So you can get tons of exposure, but if you haven't put in the reps, and not that those people aren't, unta- they're not, you know, they're obviously talented. They won, 
but it takes more than exposure. It's about a relationship that you build with your audience. And I, I know I've mentioned that I did a book on uh, uh, podcast monetization and I asked people, how long did it take you to really, you know, generate some, some decent income? And it was somewhere between two and three years leaning much more towards three. Nobody wants to hear that. And that leads me to two things I want to bring up. Number one, we all love to be on the top of the charts because there are people now that are in the podcasting space. I can guarantee you that you'll be in the top 100 of Apple Podcasts. And if you're a regular listener to the show, we've already examined that. And look, it looks great. looks great on your press kit. We're not really sure that does a ton for you. When uh, Libsyn, the company I work for, they had a podcast on the very front page of Apple, and it was a couple hundred downloads. It was not thousands, which is what I was expecting. I was like, oh, come on. It's the front page of Apple. No. So if somebody's like, I can get you into the top 100, mm, okay, that may not be as good because we do love to be high in the charts. That's just a human thing. Speaking of that, I am up for a podcast award in the education department, if you go to podcastawards.com, please vote for the show you're listening to right now, the School of Podcasting in the education department. And if you want to, my co-host for the future of podcasting, Daniel J. Lewis, is up in the technology category for the audacity to podcast. So if you're looking for who to vote for, again, podcast awards, definitely School of Podcasting in the education category. Then if you feel so moved, uh, throw Daniel a vote in uh, the technology. We love to win stuff. I get that. But I do totally agree with what I said there in that interview. It's not enough to just get exposure. You have to keep people. It's not enough to get them to click play once. It's to get them to click play every week. And There are a lot of people that want American Idol, and I'm sure you folks in the UK have your own little singing contest. You know, who was the winner of season six? Yeah, me neither. So keep that in mind because people are going to, you know, oh, I can guarantee you that you will X amount and be careful with those guarantees because make sure there's a money back guarantee and take a look at that before you go shelling out, you know, four figures to get to the top of the charts. All right, I got a tip. I got this from Udemy. It's a website where you can sell different courses and such. It's not horrible. It's uh, I have a course on there, I think, for planning your podcast. But they they do this thing, and you can opt out of this if you're a instructor. But I ended up getting an SEO course for $16. And there is something to say with perceived value. And also, if I never watch that, tutorial, if I never take that course, well, I got a great deal, you know, what's the worst that happened? I, I'd lose 16 bucks. Now that's not a lot of money, but it's not a little, you know, that adds up if I do it enough. But what you to me did is after I accept all the cookies and all that other fun stuff, it asked me, Hey, let's put this on your calendar. When do you want to spend time with this course? And it was like multiple times a week, once a week, whatever. And it was interesting And I was listening to a book by Craig Grishel. He's a Christian author, but it's the something about the power to change, I think it is. And he was talking about this, how behavioral scientists in Great Britain, they did a study of a couple hundred people who wanted to start exercising, and they divided people into three groups. Now, here's the first group. The first group, they committed to exercising. Yep, we're going to do it. We're going to exercise. The second group, yep, we're going to exercise. They committed to it, but they read a lot of material on the benefits of exercising. So they're going to stay motivated by reading. Yes, we are committed and we're reading. The third group committed to exercising. Yep, we're going to do it. But they also chose the day, time, and place where they would do it. Yeah, they put it on their calendar. And of the first two groups, remember, yes, we're committed. And then there was, yes, we're committed and we're reading. Only 36% of the people in the first two groups kept their commitment. But 91% of the people in the third group, 
that not only said they were committed, but they put it on their calendar and they picked the day and the time and the place. Those people kept their commitment. So if you're trying to improve on whatever you want to improve, I'm taking a marketing class right now because my background's in teaching. I understand marketing. I understand you know, supply demand and copywriting. I've taken a lot of courses with that, but it's one of those things that I, you know, could use a little brushing up on. And I've heard a lot about Dan Kennedy. So I bought one of his courses and I have committed that every night I watch one video and then I take notes of what did you learn? I I put that in Evernote. So if you're trying to get some momentum going and you just can't seem to find the time, put it on your calendar and treat it like a doctor's appointment that you just can't miss it. Hey, August is back to school time as I record this. We're knocking on the door of August. And if you've been thinking about starting a podcast, in fact, maybe you thought about it back in January. Yeah, the year is 58% done. And if you're thinking, oh, I need to get this podcast up and I need to get it done quickly, I can help with that. We've got step-by-step tutorials. We have an awesome community filled with brilliant podcasting minds. We have group coaching, and we have unlimited one-on-one coaching. And people go, do you mean like I can hire you? And I'm like, yep, and it's part of the the monthly or yearly fee. And like, great, but I can do it unlimited? This is one of those things, perceived value, because it's kind of crazy. People are like, that's not going to work. And I'm like, well, there might be a time when it's a problem. That's not yet, though. So if you want to, you know, I have one guy right now, we meet every week and that's perfectly fine because I, as a teacher, what do I want? And people are like three easy payments. Nope. I don't, I'm not the three easy payment guy. I'm looking for eager students ready to plan, launch, grow. And if you want to monetize your podcast, and I would love to help you school of podcasting.com slash listener. Thanks for listening until next week. Take care. God bless. Class is dismissed. All right. Time to peel back the curtain a little bit. Thank you, by the way, if you're still here. But I just want to let you know this happens to me, too. My family, I record this show Sunday. I research it. I record it. I edit it. And I put it out all in one day. And so my family knows, like, don't bother Dave on Sunday because he's doing that whole Dave cave thing. And apparently a memo must have been sent out amongst my family members today. And every time I turned around, there were people calling me uh, and I called one person. So I was taking a break, but just so you know, and then when I finally got up to go and get some, you know, it's time to get some momentum going. um, My headphones broke. I have a pair of DH one from road and this is a ongoing problem with them. This is my second pair. They were nice enough to replace it. And um, yeah, the same thing broke again on it. It's the kind of the connector where you, the thing that actually holds the, the earpiece on. And so I, I gorilla glued it, which for those of you that don't have gorilla glue, maybe if you're in the, you know, the UK, it's just, it's basically super glue. And um, I thought it was dry. And then, yeah, so there's now a bunch of hair stuck in the gorilla glue Uh, and I'm waiting for that to dry now, but it was a, you know, I don't recommend putting, um, your hair, your hair anywhere near Gorilla Glue, unless you want it, you know, violently yanked out of your scalp. It's not a, not a good look and, uh, not a fun time, but if you've ever had one of those times when you're trying to just create your podcast and get it out and it just seems like everything is against you. Yeah, it happens. And it makes you appreciate the times when things go smooth as silk which I hope is going to happen for you and your woods and your woods. Keep it generic. And that way, when at the end of the, Jesus is bad.